Japan's Atomic Energy Commission says it may cost twice as much to recycle spent nuclear fuel as it would to discard it as waste. The projections are likely to influence Japan's nuclear policy, which has promoted nuclear fuel recycling for power generation. The commission on Tuesday calculated the cost of recycling spent fuel and extracting plutonium. The cost was estimated at 1.98 to 2.14 yen per kilowatt hour of electricity generated. In contrast, the cost of discarding uh, spent fuel was between 1 and 1.35 yen per kilowatt hour. That's about half the cost of recycling. Japan had promoted spent fuel recycling as a pillar of the country's nuclear energy policy, but the government has come under pressure to review its stance in the wake of the Fukushima nuclear accident. Japan's nuclear fuel recycling efforts have already been called into question by a series of problems at a processing plant in Rokasho village in northern Japan. The city of Yokosuka near Tokyo held an annual evacuation drill on Wednesday rehearsing a response to a nuclear accident. A U.S. naval base in the city is hosting a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. Firefighters told residents to stay indoors while city officials practiced checking people for radioactive contamination. Japanese cities, towns and villages hosting nuclear power plants are divided over whether to restart reactors that are currently offline. The division came clear as a meeting of uh, the host municipalities. Uh, mayors and officials from 15 communities attended Tuesday's meeting. The main topic was whether idle reactors should resume operating. 44 of Japan's 54 reactors are now offline for regular checks or other reasons. Following the Fukushima nuclear accident, utilities are required to conduct safety stress tests on suspended reactors before they can be restarted. But data errors were found in the safety tests, and there are no prospects that the reactors can be restarted soon. Some municipalities are calling for a restart, but others remain cautious. I'd like to call on the utilities and the central government to go ahead with the resumption after safety is confirmed. As long as the cause of the Fukushima accident has not been confirmed, there's no way the reactors can be resumed. We don't trust the government's nuclear policies and regulatory system. We can't feel safe unless the mistrust is resolved. The participants failed to reach a conclusion on the issue. The chairman of the Association of Host Municipalities, Kazuharu Kawase, said they will hold discussions again after the central government clarifies its policy on the future of nuclear power. The U.S. Energy Department announced on Tuesday that it has completed the dismantling of its last B-53 bomb at a nuclear arms compound in Texas. The B-53 was the largest of the Cold War era hydrogen bombs. The department says this marks a critical step toward achieving Obama's vision of a world without nuclear weapons. Crowded planet. The global population races towards 7 billion. A warning about what that will mean for all of us. This is Newsline. I'm Ichio Kijima in Tokyo. The United Nations says the world population will mark a milestone next week. Come Monday, 7 billion people will be sharing the Earth's resources. The UN Population Fund released an annual report on Wednesday. The number of people on the planet has more than doubled in the past 50 years, from 3 billion in 1959. Forecasters say the figure will surpass 10 billion this century. Asia, the world's most populated region, is expected to reach 5.2 billion people by the middle of the century. Africa's population will triple and climb to an estimated 3.6 billion by 2100. Developed countries, including Japan and European nations, are expected to see their populations shrink. 
falling birth rates are largely to blame. The UN report says the global population increase will accelerate urbanization and spread poverty mainly in developing countries. It also says water shortages will worsen and developed countries will have difficulty maintaining economic growth, economic growth and social security systems because of aging populations. The report calls on governments to respond by drawing up plans and investing appropriately. No, just, 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 just give, this is much more important month, because you, everybody can become infertile in one generation. One sound bite, one sound bite. I should say something about Fukushima and also Chernobyl, but certainly now Fukushima and infertility. The, the, the truth is that infertility has been in, uh, increasing in the world for the last 30 or 40 years, probably because of all the radionuclides that, are, that people are exposed to, originally from the weapons fallout, uh, the global atmospheric testing, and then from Chernobyl, and now from Fukushima. And there are things that people there can do to, to try and minimize, minimize this. Uh, but the main thing is to get away from the radiation, but, and because they, what they have to realize is that this, this is an invisible, uh, it's an invisible attack on, on the human race. It's something that will, will appear over the next 20, 30, 40 years, and, and its cause will not really be investigated. So we also predict, I also predict, on, uh, as a result of this ECRR model, that there will be significant increases in infertility in Japan as a result of this accident and this is quite terrible and in, any, in many ways it's more terrible than the cancer in adults because it's, it, it's destroying children who, who could have been born but now will not be born and some of those who are going to be born from our studies in the Middle East will have horrifying deformities and, and will obviously in an advanced uh, country like Japan will be aborted uh, 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 you know, um, uh, clinically, clinically aborted before they get born, so that the birth rate will fall. Uh, what did the data show until now, before Fukushima? Oh yes, the the data has been showing that um, that the birth rate, uh, that the that the the, the the sperm count in men has has been falling drastically. Uh, there was a very important study done in Jerusalem a few years ago, which showed that Israeli men had had very low sperm count, and that over the previous ten years it had fallen by a significant amount. And the, and the authors of that study said that if it continued to fall at the same rate by the year 2020, that they would be totally infertile, and the Israelis would, would have no more children. It's as bad as that. It's as bad as that. And we are so we're, we're now, as a result of Fukushima, introducing a huge load more of this stuff into the atmosphere. But I have to say that it will mostly affect the Japanese, as far as I can tell. It will mostly be a Japanese affair, but that doesn't make it any better. And where does the radiation uh, come in Israel? Come from in Israel? In Israel, it comes from the uh, use of, of uranium weapons. The massive, massive, massive use of uranium weapons by the uh, by the various military. Um, Invaders, I suppose you would call them, the U.S., the, the, the Allies, they call them, uh, used hundreds and maybe thousands of tons of uranium weapons. Um, there's a new weapon now which uses uranium, and we've made measurements in the hair of the mothers in Fallujah uh, and uh, mothers of children with congenital anomalies. Uh, and this study hasn't been published yet, but what we have found is significant man-made uranium in the hair of these mothers, which is pro almost certainly the cause of the congenital anomalies. And where you have congenital anomalies, of course, you also have infertility. It's just that with, with the, in Fallujah, they, they don't have sufficient uh, medical methodology to, 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 to pick up these, these uh, deformities before they're born. They don't have all the ultrasound stuff and so on, but in the West they probably find these things and abort them early. So that's why we have these big increases. But the increases are associated with an environmental exposure to uranium. That's the point. And, and you have to remember that Fukushima contains probably 2,000 tons of uranium. 2,000 tons. Chernobyl had 200 tons, and 50 tons of it exploded. So, it, so all the things that Alexei Yablokov is talking about is a consequence of two, uh, 50 tons of uranium in Europe with a bit of with fission products, of course. But in Fukushima, there's more than that. There's, in principle, if the whole lot goes up, it's, it's a massive amount of uranium. And are there some uh, long-term consequences after 20, uh, 30 years, 40 years? Uh, it doesn't go away. What, 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 what Alexei says is true. It doesn't go away. Um, what Rosa Goncharova showed here in her talk 
when she was studying the bank voles, the little animals that live in the Chernobyl zone, was that, that once you irradiate these, these, these creatures, and also human beings, Dubrova has shown this, you, you initiate a, pro a process called genomic instability. And then this is, this is like sort of throwing a switch. And what it does is it increases the genetic mutation rate, uh, quite apart from any mutation that the uranium causes or, or the radiation causes. That's a separate thing. This is like an automatic switch that is thrown at quite low doses. And then you pass this switch on to your children, and they pass it on to their children, and so on. And then with the bank rolls, uh, I know that they've studied the bank rolls and found that 22 generations have still got this switch. Now, I've studied the nuclear test veterans. Uh, these, are, these are the men who worked for the British army uh, at the nuclear tests in the Pacific in the, in the 60s. And uh, I studied their children and their grandchildren. And what we found was that the children of these test veterans, this is the British, British Nuclear Test Veteran Association, have about a, a nine-fold excess of congenital malformations. But the extraordinary thing is that the grandchildren also have an eight-fold excess of congenital malformations. So the normal genetic idea that you, you pick off the weak and then it goes down and then you get the strong, and eventually, you know, this is the old nuclear idea of the, of the nuclear war, all that we, we just have radiation-resistant people who survive. It's just not true. What happens is that it throws a big switch and everybody is affected. And it's, you're affected for generations and generations. So it's, it doesn't even matter if the uranium goes away. It doesn't matter if these radionuclides all decay. Because you've imprinted something on the human genome which is there forever. That's the danger. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Would it be accurate to say that no one has died as, as a result of exposure to radio, excuse me, radi radiation in Fukushima. So, and secondly, can you assure that no one will die as a result of exposure to radiation in the future? You want to take that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, what we know right now, um, uh, there have been no uh, fatalities that we're aware of that are directly related to radiation exposure. Uh, I believe there were. The China Syndrome. It's about people, people who lie, and people faced with the agony of telling the truth. Right. People like Kimberly Wells, a television reporter paid to smile, not to think. A few words about a veterinarian who makes house calls on sick fish, or is it aquarium calls? Richard Adams, a cameraman who never learned how to play by the rules. Wait till you get in that other room, get that radiation all over that cute little body. Jack Goodell, an engineer who knows too much to tell the truth. In anything that man ever does, there's some element of risk, right? Well, that's why we have what we call defense in depth. And cares too much to lie. No accident. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant. Where it will end will depend on three people. I would say you're probably lucky to be alive. Same for the rest of Southern California. Jane Fonda. Let's face it, you didn't get this job because of your investigative abilities. Kimberly, don't fight it. Jack Lemon. There was a vibration. Michael Douglas. I don't know that accident is the right word. Accident is the right word. The China Syndrome. The harder they try, the more resistance they meet. They've got their own security men. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you want me to make it any clearer? The closer they get. No. the more threatening it becomes. No. The China Syndrome. Today, only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. Soon, you will know. The China Syndrome.